So do police have the right to arrest the mentally ill on the streets for skipping their medication on or off the streets? It's a question that's come up several times in the wake of multiple mass shootings now and some subway attacks here in New York. Well, now New York City police are taking the idea one step past that. The nation's largest police force putting together a so-called most wanted list of mentally ill patients. And officers plan to arrest them even though they haven't committed any crimes. So what would our Constitution say about that? Fox News senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano, joins me You always now. give me the easy questions. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I just think we might, have, we might have a lively discussion about this. because it is it. it's, it's, an, it's an issue that's complicated. Yes. So yeah. if you come to New York City or any other major city, you see mentally ill people walking on the streets, many of them homeless, and it's a dire situation. You say that rounding them up and arresting them is unconstitutional. Well, it's clearly unconstitutional because the Constitution says the only way you can arrest someone is if you see them committing a crime or a probable cause to believe they have committed, not are going to commit, but have committed a crime. Now, in the case of someone who is mentally ill, mental illness is, is a range, is a terminology used to apply to a range of mental deficiencies. It could be very mild or very severe. Only those who are mentally ill and are in imminent danger of harm to themselves and others can be in the category of candidates for arrest. Anything short of that, the person cannot be arrested right. without an order from a judge. So what happened is in the last couple of months here, there's been these two subway attacks where allegedly mentally ill people pushed innocent people out onto the tracks and they died. My question to you though is, how do you know at what level that mentally ill person is. How, how can a police officer gauge that when he's just he or she's walking down the street and know whether or not they're to that point that you're describing? They, they can't, and it's not, their, it's not their job to do so. That's why if a, if a person has been adjudicated a danger to themselves and others and is not incarcerated, that's one thing. But a cop looking at somebody on a subway saying, I think you're crazy, I think you're gonna push somebody into the subway, uh, the, the, the path of the subway train, mm -hmm. and therefore I'm going to arrest you, that's not permissible under our, our system. We do not have a system of government that lets the government predict who's going to do the wrong thing and arrest them before they do it. Mm -hmm. The police should be there to keep us safe. The MTA should operate subways and subway platforms that are safe. But you can't arrest groups of people because of what some one or two among their number are likely to do. That's what they did in Eastern Europe when we overthrew those governments. Mm -hmm. I think that people, though, who have been victims of crime or threats resulting from situations like this are frustrated yes. because yes. many times you cannot mandate for mentally ill people to take medications. Yes. And when they're on medications, they're fine, but when they're not, they can be violent. Yes, so that's, that's the gray area where a person has been ordered by a judge to take their medication and doesn't, uh, and then may be in a position where they could harm someone. Mm -hmm. That's why we have a Second Amendment so we can protect ourselves. Uh -oh. And that's why he knows the Constitution. <laughs> Judge, great to see you. Hope you had a great weekend. Pleasure. Thank you, Gretchen.